Copper toxicity is one of those health topics that spark a lot of debate online. If you've ever Googled it, you probably found a ton of conflicting opinions and advice. I remember feeling completely overwhelmed when I first learned about it. Some people say it's all nonsense, others say you should avoid all copper like it's poison, and then there are those who tell you to just load up on zinc and then you will be fine. The truth is that like most things in health and nutrition, this topic is also a lot more nuanced. In this video, I want to break down some of the biggest mistakes that beginners make when it comes to copper toxicity and copper detox. These are the mistakes that cause a lot of confusion, delay healing, and sometimes even make things worse. If you are serious about getting better, then it's crucial to understand where these ideas go wrong so you can approach your recovery the right way. Let's go through all of them one by one. Mistake number one is believing copper toxicity isn't real. This is one of the most common and honestly one of the most frustrating myths out there. People will say that copper toxicity doesn't exist, at least not outside of a rare genetic disorder called Wilson's disease. According to this view, unless you've been officially diagnosed with Wilson's, your body should be able to get rid of any excess copper on its own. The same people will also often say that the body is smart, it knows how to balance things, or copper isn't dangerous unless you're taking huge amounts of supplements. But here's where this view falls apart. It's almost entirely based on blood tests, and blood tests are terrible for spotting copper toxicity. The reality is that copper doesn't primarily accumulate in your bloodstream, it builds up in your tissues. So you can have a normal or even low copper reading on your blood and still have dangerous levels stored deep in places like your liver, brain, and connective tissue. This can lead to a very dangerous situation, because if you're relying only on your blood test results, then you might assume everything is fine, or worse, you might see low copper values and then start taking more of it in supplemental form, but not realizing that you're actually fueling a hidden overload. This is one of the easiest ways to accidentally make your symptoms worse. It's a mistake I see all the time, especially in people who are new to mineral testing and who are trying to figure out what's going on with their fatigue, anxiety, and other unexplainable symptoms. That's also why I created an entire video dedicated to proper copper testing, how it works, which methods are most accurate, and how to interpret your results correctly. If you suspect your copper levels might be off or copper has something to do with your symptoms, then make sure to watch that lesson before jumping to conclusions based on a normal lab panel. It will save you a lot of time and symptoms. Mistake number two is trying to avoid all copper. This is the flip side of the first mistake. Once someone knows of copper toxicity, they often swing too far in the other direction. So suddenly they're trying to cut every last trace of copper from their diet, which isn't the solution either. Your body needs copper to function properly. It's essential for the production of red blood cells, to support your nervous system, to fuel your immune response, and other things. So cutting it out completely can lead to new problems and won't necessarily help your detox efforts. What we want to achieve instead is to increase bioavailable copper, so that copper that is bound to carrier proteins like ceruloplasmin and that can be used in the body. And we also want to decrease biounavailable copper, so the kind that is built up in tissues and that causes inflammation. The way to do this is neither to avoid all copper nor to increase your intake by a lot, as some protocols tell you to. Instead, you need to give your body the nutrients to eliminate stored copper and then create more ceruloplasmin. That means in terms of a diet, most copper toxic people usually need a normal to slightly lower the normal copper diet while fixing other nutrient deficiencies and while also boosting the function of their elimination pathways, like the liver, bile, kidneys, and lymph. Everything put together will then make sure that your body has the energy and cofactors necessary to eliminate excess copper while also increasing bioavailable copper at the same time. Mistake number three is thinking that you just need zinc. This is also a very common mistake. You've probably heard that taking zinc helps lower copper levels because the two minerals compete with each other in the gut. That part is definitely true. Zinc definitely blocks copper absorption and it can even help push some copper out of the tissue. But the problem is that just taking zinc usually isn't enough. Why? Because copper doesn't leave your body through the same door that it came in. 
it mostly exits through your liver and bile, like I just said. So if your liver isn't working well, or if you're too fatigued to support proper detox, then that copper doesn't get eliminated. It just gets steered up and moved around, which can make you feel a lot worse. For example, you will feel anxious, foggy, and even more exhausted than before. That's because the copper is now active in your system without a clear exit route. It will just float around in your bloodstream and irritate tissue and cause inflammation. So in other words, zinc definitely helps mobilize copper, but it doesn't guarantee elimination. This, like I said a second ago, comes down to your elimination organs and supporting your whole metabolism so it can self-regulate again. Without that foundation, zinc on its own is just one small piece of a much bigger puzzle. This then brings me to mistake number four, which is making copper the only focus of your recovery protocol. This is another very common mistake that I see a lot of beginners make once they finally realize that copper is behind their health struggles, or at least part of it. They get laser focused on detoxing copper and nothing else. Every supplement, every food choice, every protocol is about getting that copper out. It becomes almost like tunnel vision. Now, don't get me wrong, copper can absolutely be a huge driver behind symptoms like chronic fatigue, hormonal problems, anxiety, or skin issues. For some people, including myself, finally addressing their copper overload is the one thing that helps everything start to shift. It can feel like a breakthrough moment. But please also understand that copper is never the only problem. If copper has been building up in your body for months or even years, then it hasn't been happening in isolation. Nutrient imbalances tend to come as a package deal. And when copper gets too high, it usually drags down other nutrients like magnesium, potassium, and zinc. Calcium might also be out of balance, and the thyroid often gets sluggish as a result. Your adrenal function might be down, your nervous system will probably be in a chronic state of stress, and you might not even be digesting or absorbing nutrients properly because of your gut issues. The thing is that even if you manage to get some of that copper out of your system, you're still left with all these other issues that have built up along with the copper. So if you ignore all of that, and put all your focus on copper, you might feel a bit better at first, but the progress probably won't last. That's why a more holistic approach is so important. I know it's a buzzword, but in this case, it actually applies. Copper detox is a key piece of the puzzle, definitely, but you also should rebuild your overall nutrient balance, support your body and specific organs like your thyroid, liver, and then also take a look at your nervous system. I know this can sound overwhelming at first, but it's actually easier than you might think. Much of it comes down to lowering stress in your life and improving your overall nutrient status. So all I'm trying to say is that instead of going all in on copper and forgetting the rest, take a step back and look at the bigger picture. That's how real healing will happen. And the last mistake I want to talk about is going too fast with your detox. And this one ties in with the others that we already talked about. A lot of people get very excited about detoxing the copper and then think, let's just go for it. So they start megadosing copper antagonists like zinc, vitamin B6, vitamin C, and others, which all lead them to push their bodies very hard. The result is usually that they will feel worse, sometimes much worse. Now, all of the nutrients I just named can and sometimes should be part of your detox regimen, but not the only thing that you do. Again, you need to start strengthening your body's ability to eliminate all kinds of toxins, not just copper. Otherwise, you're basically recirculating the problem and will go crazy from all the copper dumping that's going on. I've been there and it definitely sucks. That's why I always say go slow. Build up your body first, support your elimination organs, and make sure your bowels, liver, kidney, and lymph are all working properly before you start mobilizing stored copper. Otherwise, you're just throwing fuel on the fire. To wrap up this video, please understand that copper toxicity is a very complex issue. But more than that, it's a misunderstood one. These common mistakes are all things that I've either done myself or that I've seen others do. So I'm not blaming anyone here for making them. The good thing is that once you understand them, you can avoid them. And when you do, your recovery will be much faster. Also, if you're looking for an even more detailed step-by-step -step guide on how to fix copper toxicity, make sure to check the description where I link my copper toxicity masterclass. 
It includes the exact protocol that I use to heal along with videos on diet, supplements and lifestyle. For more info, just open the description. It's listed under my programs.